Well, this is episode 219 of Shadows and Pretties. Now, before I get started with, you know, the Christmas movies, um, be reviewing them, I thought I would go ahead and, you know, do a review on this biographical psychological drama film called Mommy Dearest. This is an older movie, and it came out in 1981. I mean... I saw a clip of this, you know, just recently, and I honestly, I didn't even know if this was a 90s movie or an 80s movie, but it kind of felt like either or. But when I looked it up, yep, it was an 80s movie. But, you know, since it's an 80s movie, I thought I would go ahead and review this movie. Now, this, however, the film is about this young girl named Christina Crawford, who has her adoptive mother who um, basically is an abusive and manipulative mother. So this one does have pretty good acting too, especially like a pretty good um, 80s movie would. And this is actually based on the book Mommy's Dearest um, by Christina Crawford. So anyways, I think we can go with that book and all that in a bit. But I thought I would go ahead and, you know, get started with, you know, what this movie is about. Especially for people who haven't watched the movie in a really long time or just would want a refresher. So, anyways, I have not seen this movie until, you know, just recently. So, yeah. I thought I would go ahead and, you know, review this movie because why not? I mean, the acting thing is pretty good for what it is as well as the concept and all. I do really like how the movie went out and that. So, anyways, I think... um we should go with, you know, the plot of the movie just to, you know, give out of it. Now, I am going to go with the book just a little bit, but, you know, we'll we'll see. But I guess we'll go from there. So this is about Joan, or Joan Crawford, is a driven actress and is compulsively clean housekeeper who tries to control the lives of those around her as tightly as she controls herself. So to prepare for work at MGM Studios... She rises at 4 a.m., scrubbing her face and arms with soap and boiling water before plunging herself into a bowl of witch hazel, which happens to be an herb and ice to keep to close the pores. Helga, in her new mind, thinks that Joanne, Joan's living room is spotless, but Joan finds the detail overlooked and she loses her temper. So it seems to me that this Joan Crawford... Must pretty much has some mental issues or something. I don't really know. But when I saw how, you know, really messed up the mother was, especially to Christina later on, which we'll be getting to that, I honestly could see that maybe this mom might have some mental issues or something. I don't really know why the hell was she like this in the movie. I have a feeling she just has some mental issues or possibly maybe is mentally unstable. But, yeah, I mean, I saw her behavior and was like, damn, my mom gets angry at times when I did something wrong, but she wouldn't go as far as, you know, doing all the things that this Joan Crawford did. Like, she knows better than that. And I'm glad my mom's not like that. So, it's unfortunate that children nowadays, especially young adults or teens that live with parents, unfortunately, this does happen to everybody. Buddy, I'm not saying it's always the case for certain people. I'm not going to lie, but it's unfortunate that some people who are living with parents, like such as children, teenagers and that, are always getting, you know, picked on by their parents. Whatever it be, they have mental issues or if they're on drugs, drinking problems, anything is pretty possible with the parents. I mean, I don't really, I was surprised of how messed up this movie is, especially with the subject matter given. So, Yeah. So later on, Joan gets in a relationship with the Hollywood star lawyer Greg Savitt, but her career is on a downswing. So despite wanting a baby, she cannot get pregnant. Seven pregnancies she, when she was married to an actor, French Tone, ended with miscarriages. Very unfortunate because, to be fair, it's unfortunate that, you know, she couldn't get pregnant, so she ended up having miscarriages. Like... My mom had miscarriages, like, before she had me and my brother. So, yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate. I mean, that happens to a lot of women. And it's unfortunate that they go through something like that. I mean, miscarriages are very upsetting. 
but it's also very hurtful in that, in a way. So, when denied an application for adoption, she insists Greg's help to secure a baby. Joan adopts a girl named Christina and a boy named Christopher. Joan lavishes Christina with attention and luxuries, such as extravagant birthday party, but also enforces the code of denial of discipline. However, when Christina is showered with birthday gifts, Joan allows her to choose just one to keep and the rest to donate to charity. Like, um, you need to, like, just let the... If the kid does not want a toy or something, you know, with birthday gifts, you know, don't have her to, to keep just one and donate the rest. I mean, have the kid take all of them, and if they don't like the toy or whatever, they then you could donate it then. I mean, it's just kind of really... I have a feeling this mother in this movie was pretty strict with her kid about toys. I mean, like, here's the thing. If I were to have a birthday party for my um kid, I would let them, you know, get however they want. And if they could keep it, if they like. If they don't like a certain toy or something and say, Mommy, I don't like it. I like, would say, okay, why? If they don't like it because it looks weird or it was too complicated or something... Or if they don't want to play with it anymore or something, then that's different. But what this mother did in this is just unbelievable. Like, holy crap. I was having mixed feelings when I watched this movie. I had a lot of mixed feelings because, well, I like movies from the 80s and 90s and, and even at, before then. But this is just one movie that gives me a lot of mixed feelings. Like, part of me wants to like it, but then part of me does not like it for all the right and wrong reasons or whatever because my mind is in a daze. But however though, this gets really worse where it just makes me want to say, what the hell is this movie? It just obviously makes me want to dump a bunch of coke all over my head or at least Pepsi just so I could forget about what the on earth I just witnessed. Like in this, when Christina rebels against her mother, confrontations and shoe, Joan beats Christina in a swimming pool race, laughs at her, and when Christina acts, reacts angrily, Joan becomes enraged and locks a child in the pool house. However, when Joan Ruth discovers Christina wearing her makeup and imitating her, she takes an offense and cuts off chunks of Christina's hair to punish her. Yeah, not a really good punishment, to be completely honest, right there. Not a really good um, punishment. I mean... If my kid did something like putting makeup on them, I probably just tell them, you know, that it's that they should not touch my stuff. And I I would probably just put them in a timeout or and have a good talking to with my kid, not just do what this mother did. I would just have a talking to with my kid, put him or her in timeout for it and probably hide my makeup so then they can't do all that. I mean, what this mother did is set a really bad examples for for any kid. And this is kind of why I am not going to be like this mother right there. Because I know what she's doing is wrong. So, Joan resents Greg's allegiance to the studio's boss, Louis B. Mayer, arguing with Greg. She then downs the glasses off of Arca and throws a drink in his face. When Greg breaks up with her later, she cuts him out of the photos. However, when Mayer forces Joan to leave MGM after feed your owner brand her box office poison, she hacks down the prize of Rose Garden with a pair of gardening shears with an axe. When Joan finds Christina's expensive dresses hanging from the wa- wire hangers, which she despises and prohibits, in range, Joan yanks the dresses from Christina's closet, throwing them onto the room, beats Christina with the metal hanger nor as she squeals, like... The hell is this way kind of way to treat your kid like that? I'm surprised prize at child support services at this point didn't even do anything about it. I mean, that wouldn't be really surprised, but you'll see later on eventually. Declaring that spanking is a and, and declaring that the sparkling clean bathroom floor is dirty, Joan throws the cleaning power all over it, striking Christina across the back as she can, willing for someone to clean it. However, when Joan sends Christina to Cho Chadwick School. Years later, when a teenage Christina is caught kissing a boy, Joan brings her home. Barbara Bennett, a reporter from Red Book, is there writing a puff piece on Joan's home life. 
After Joan lies about Christina, saying she got expelled, Christina confronts her and her, uh, the reporter. Joan slaps Christina twice in the face when the confrontation ends, with Joan attacking Christina to the floor, nearly choking her. So Christina flashes around until Joan is life's assistant and the reporter pulls her away. When Joan sends Christina to, to infringe Sacred Heart Academy, where she is allowed to have no contact with the outside world, Joan marries Alfred Steely, a CEO of Pepsi Cola, and moves into New York City and pressures him to go to the depth to fund under lavish lifestyle. However, after his death, the Pepsi board directors try t- tries to force her to resign, but Joan threatens to the public badmouth and the product to not let her get a container of poison. So later on, after graduating from Flintridge, Christina rents an apartment in Manhattan, and she's also acting in a soap opera. When Christina is hospitalized for an ovarian tumor, she is temporarily replaced on the show by her visibly drunk mother. Joan eventually dies of cancer in 1977, and Christina and Christopher learns that she had disinherited from them both. Christopher then says that her mother's last word was the usual class, well, Christina says, does she? And that's how the movie ends. So that was actually a pretty messed up movie, but this movie also gave me a lot of mixed feelings. Like, I mean, what this mother did right here, I have a feeling she's just, you know, got a lot of mental issues and she gives, you know, her kids a hard time, mainly Christina. She's basically picking on her and basically treat her like she's a third class citizen, basically talking down to her daughter like that. And it's just very abusive. I mean, why hasn't child support services, you know, were aware of this and they should have, you know, just take the kids away, away from this mother. Like, why, like, why didn't that happen? I mean, it would have been at least a good way to get the kids away, but that is just really messed up. But yeah, during, according to the Dunway producer, Frank Yalbanans promised her that the casting processes that he wished to portray Joan Crawford is the more monetary way than she was portrayed in Christina's book. Securing to the rights of the book, Christina's husband, David Van Kunitz, was then given an executive producer credit, all credit, although he had no experience in producing films. So, however, that, there is also another detail in making of the film called The Mommy Dearest Diary, and Carol Ann tells Al, in it, she describes the difficulty of working with the Dunaway and those method approach to portraying Joan seemed to be absorbing her into making the difficult to cast and crew and etc. So there was obviously criticism from the public and that about it. But however, this movie was then released by Paramount Home Video in the 1990s. And however, though, in 2006, it was released on DVD through a um, Warner Bro home video or something. So, excuse me. Anyways, this is the based on the legacy that happens to Christina Crawford. Now, however, the writer of the minor of the film is based on no involvement of making of the film, but denounced the film to be grotesque and a work of fiction, specifically stating that Joan never chopped down a tree with an axe or beat her with a hangwire like it was being in the film. However, for decades, Dunaway was famously, famously reluctant to discuss Mommy Dearest in the interviews. So, yeah. It's pretty something. Now that I went for the movie and I did explain about the movie, I mean, it's got, you know, we got um, Faye Dunaway as Joan Croft, Joan Crawford. We also have um, Diana Swirsch as Christina Crawford as an adult with Mara Rahobo or Mara Boyd as Christina Crawford as a child. We do got pretty good actors that did pretty good job in making the movies and you know, they did pretty good acting, not going to lie. But I was just really surprised that, you know, some of the some of the stuff that was involved in this movie is just really messed up. Like, I mean, it's just really messed up that, you know, what happened with, you know, Christina and all the abuse that she went through. I mean, I feel you got to feel bad for the for the girl that went through all this. I mean, it was just messed up up of how the all the whole thing went out so basically 
In the book, Christina contends that Joan, who describes as not wishing involvement in parenting her, was an alcoholic who hit her regularly and placed more importance on her career than her family like. So, yeah, it is um, a pretty interesting um, concept in the book. So later on, when this book was adapted into a movie, the Christina gave a negative feedback about the film. And the last pages of Christina's book suggested that she was not about to let her mother have her last word on nothing that her daughter from her free will and etc. So, I mean, it was the fact that Christina later released a 20th anniversary edition, which included 100 pages of new material, omitted about 50 pages of the original material, and the second edition names being in certain individuals not named in the original book, and focuses more on Christina's relationship with her mother from high school to graduation until the 1970s, who also reveals that it became aim of her and her brother and describes several incidents involving the film. So, yeah, it was actually, I mean, this book is pretty much the same way, I, same, pretty much the same as the original one, except in this one, one, there was a lot of stuff that happened and went on. Now, this was honestly, um, pretty much the same way how the original movie V went out. Like, this is, um, pretty much the same, um, thing as the original movie. Like, the book is pretty much the same as the original movie, but I don't really know much about the book because I've not read it, but I'm pretty sure there is differences in that book, so if you guys want to point out the differences, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. But like I said with this movie, it's got mixed feelings. Like, I had really a lot of mixed feelings with this um movie when I first watched it. it. It was a lot of mixed feelings. I mean, there was parts of it that I really liked. I liked the acting. I actually liked the fact that it's got a good night, a 1980s feel to it. I mean, it kind of almost felt like a 90s movie, but it was an 80s movie. I mean, I was confused. I mean, this one came out in 1981, and I mean, that's the 80s were pretty popular for movies as well as um the 90s, but you get get from there or there. So anyways... With that being the case and that being said, um, now I'm going to say I have not read the book, so I can't really um, say what I think about the book because I've not read it about the book. So I don't know the book really well because I've not read it. But with this movie, it's got mixed feelings for me. So I could say I kind of liked it, but at the same time, I really didn't. I mean, I can't really give it a rating because of it's just really mixed in there. I don't really know why, but it's just really mixed up in there. You know, I'm kind of got mixed feelings for it. So I'm going to have to sit here and say that this is just my own opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these, um, you know, movies. And this is my own personal opinion. If you don't like this movie, that is perfectly fine. And I respect your opinion. If you like it, that's fine. If you don't like it, that's fine too. So I guess with that being the case and that being said, I'm going to sit here and just say, what did you guys personally think of this movie? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done personally helped make the movie a lot better. Feel free to leave me now what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Lion Queen. I want to thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're brand new here to this channel, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload. So that way, you guys will not miss an upload. And as always... I'll be seeing you all in the next video. Peace out. And like always, I'll see you all next time.